Hello friends. Welcome back to my channel Calibration Academy. If you are new on this channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon to get notification. And if you like our content, please press like button, it really help us. And if you need video on some specific topic, please let us know in comment box. In today's video, I will give the answers of top 30 instrumentation questions. So, please watch this video till the end. In this video, I haven't covered control valve questions and answers. I will cover this topic in one separate video. Now, let's go to first question. First question is, why calibration of instrument is important? The calibration of all instruments is important, since it gives the opportunity to check the instrument against a known standard, and it also allows you to adjust the output of instrument, if you notice any error. Second question is, what are the process variables? Flow, pressure, temperature, and level are known as process variables. Define all the process variables and state their unit of measurement. First type of process variable is the flow. Any fluids or liquids flowing from one place to another place is called flow, and it is defined as volume per unit of time. Flow is usually measured in liters per seconds, liters per minute, meter cube per hour, kilograms per hour etc. Second type of process variable is the pressure. It is defined as force per unit area. And it is usually measured in bar, pascal, inches H2O. Um, H2O etc. Third type of process variable is level measurement. It is a technique to measure the level of surface inside a tank, reactor, or vessel. It is usually measured in meters, millimeter, centimeter, percentage etc. Fourth type of measurement is temperature. It is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. And it is usually measured in degree centigrade, degree Fahrenheit, degree Kelvin, and degree Rankin. Fourth common type of question is, how to measure milliampere output of transmitter. Milliampere output of transmitter can be measured by connecting multimeter in series with transmitter. And putting multimeter in DC milliampere measuring mode. Fifth question is, what are the primary elements used for flow measurement? The primary elements used for flow measurement are, orifice plate, venturi tube, pitot tube, anubars, flow nozzle, weir and flumes. Sixth question is, what are the different types of orifice plates? There are four different types of orifice plate. First type is concentric. Second type is segmental. Third type is eccentric. And fourth type is quadrant edge. Seventh and most important type of technical interview question is, how to remove differential pressure transmitter from service. In normal operation, both, high side and low side manifold valve is in open condition, and equalizing valve is in close condition. To remove DPT from service, close the low pressure side block valve. Then open the equalizing valve. At the end, close the high pressure side block valve. Eighth question is, how to put differential pressure transmitter back into service after calibration, or after servicing of DPT. This is also one of the most important technical questions in job interview. To begin with all valves closed, and to put DPT back into service, first of all, open the equalizing valve. Secondly, open the high pressure side block valve slowly. In third step, close the equalizing valve. And finally, Open the low pressure side block valve. Now, DPT is in service mode. Ninth question is, how to identify an orifice in the pipeline? An orifice tab is welded on the orifice plate which extends outer of the line, which gives indication that orifice plate is in the pipeline. Tenth question is, what is the purpose of orifice tab? There are mainly five different applications of orifice tab. First of all, orifice tab gives indication of an orifice plate in a line. Orifice tab is also useful because it has the information about the orifice diameter. In addition to this, it also gives the useful information about the material of orifice plate. Furthermore, 
The tag number of the orifice plate is also mentioned on it. Last but not least, orifice tab has mark on it, which gives indication of inlet of the orifice. Eleventh question is, how do you carry out piping for a differential pressure flow transmitter on liquids, gas and steam services, and why? As you can see from the diagram that, on the liquid lines, the transmitter is mounted below the orifice plate because of the fact that liquids have a property of self-draining. On gas service, the transmitter is mounted above the orifice plate because gases have a property of self-venting and secondly condensate formation. On the steam service, the transmitter is mounted below the orifice plate with condensate pots. And both the pots should be at the same level. Twelfth question is, what is the purpose of condensation port? There are mainly two applications of condensation port in steam service. First of all, condensation port is used to ensure that, constant pressure at low pressure side. Secondly, it ensures that the condensation of steam in the impulse lines does not impair the ability to accurately sense differential pressure fluctuations, and to minimize gauge line error. One of the most important and basic technical question is, what is the purpose of square root extractor in DPT? As we know that, differential pressure developed by a Venturi, orifice plate, pitot tube, or any other acceleration-based flow element is proportional to the square of the flow rate. Square root extractor is a function or device, which takes the square root of the signal from the flow transmitter, and converts to corresponding linear flow signal. Let's go to next question. Next question is, what is the working principle of magnetic flowmeter? Electromagnetic flowmeter is velocity-based flow meter and it measures volumetric flow rate of liquids. Magnetic flowmeter's operating principle is based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Mag flowmeter has two exciting coils that generate a constant magnetic field, and liquid flowing through the pipe act as conductor. When conductive liquid such as water flows through the pipe or tube, the magnetic field applies force to the charged particles, which induces voltage which is detected by two sensing electrodes mounted in mag flow meter body. Next question is, there is a situation, when an operator tells you that flow indication is more than the expected reading, how would you start checking? First of all, in this case, flush both the impulse lines. Secondly, if still the indication is more, then check low pressure side for choke. If there is no choke on the both side, then check leaks on the LP side. If there is still problem, then calibrate the transmitter. Next question is, what is absolute pressure? Absolute pressure is the total pressure present in the system. Absolute pressure is equal to, gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. 70th question is, what is vacuum pressure? Any pressure below atmospheric pressure is known as vacuum pressure. Next question is, what is smart transmitter? Single modular auto ranging remote transducer is known as smart transmitter. A smart transmitter is a microprocessor based transmitter. And it is the core of the electronics in a device. A smart transmitter is known for its heart compatibility and it has the capability to send 4 to 20 mA signal, and digital signal on the same line. Now, the most important question is, what is the difference between 2-wire, 3-wire and 4-wire transmitter? In a 2-wire transmitter, there is one common cable for power and signal. While, in 3-wire transmitter, data signal and power are respect to common ground. And, in 4-wire transmitter, two separate wire for power and two separate wire for signal. Another important question is, what is LIV0, or why 4 to 20 mA signal is preferred over 0 to 20 mA signal? In 4 to 20 mA signal, 4 represent minimal value, and 20 mA represent maximum value. With 0 to 20 mA signal, we cannot distinguish between minimum field value and connection break signal. In both cases, output will be 0 mA. 
However, in 4 to 20 mA signal, at lower range value, transmitter output would be 4 mA, and if transmitter is faulty or connection break happens, then transmitter output would be 0 mA. Next question is, what are the primary elements used for measuring pressure? The primary elements used for measuring pressure are board and tube, diaphragm, capsule, bellows, pressure springs. Next question is, explain how you will measure level with a differential pressure transmitter. To measure level with DPT, the bottom connection of the vessel is connected to high pressure side of the transmitter, and top connection of vessel is connected to low pressure side of DPT. 23rd number question is, please identify, is it open tank or close tank, and why? It is a close tank. Because DPT's low pressure side is connected to top part of vessel. If low port side of DPT is vented to atmosphere, then it is known as open tank. Next question is, how to connect DP transmitter to open tank? For open tank, low port side of DPT is vented to atmosphere. 25th question is, what is wet leg, and what is dry leg in level measurement? In dry leg method of calibration, low pressure side of DPT is filled with any gas or air. And in wet leg method of calibration, low pressure side of DPT is filled with any liquid. Next question is, what is the purpose of zero trim in pressure transmitter, and in differential pressure transmitter? Zero trim is useful for compensating mounting position effects, or for zero shifts due to static pressure in differential pressure applications. My next question is, what is thermocouple? Thermocouples is temperature measurement device, and it works on principle of seed back effect. Thermocouple has two different types of metals, which join together at one end. And when the junction of the two metals is heated, a voltage is produced that can be correlated back to the temperature. Next question is, what is the RTD? RTD is resistor temperature detector, and it is generally used for precise temperature measurement. RTD has positive temperature coefficient of expansion. It means, resistance of RTD increases, when the temperature increases. Based on material, RTD has two types. First type is platinum. And second type is nickel. Second last question is, what are the different types of RTD available in the market? There are mainly three different types of RTD. First type of RTD is a two-wire RTD. Second type of RTD is a three-wire RTD. And third type is four-wire RTD. Last question is, why three-wire RTD is preferred in industry as compared to two-wire RTD? Three-wire RTD has extra lead wire, and this extra lead wire eliminates the effect of lead resistance in the circuit, which is not possible in two-wire RTD. Because of lead wire compensation feature, three-wire RTD is more accurate than the two-wire RTD. And this is a reason three-wire RTD is preferred in industry compared to two-wire RTD. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you like this interview questions and answers. Please give us your valuable feedback in comment box. And if you have any questions about this video, then please feel free to ask me your questions in comment box. And please like and share this video with your friends if you think our content is informative for you and others.